Now this is bad. What's the total? Huh? And what's the average? Now, we have to really look at this for a second. We're getting tired. We're motivating the workers. We've talked about quality. We brought in a quality consultant. We've had a quality rally. It's worse. Right? Okay. This is, let me, let me be straight about this now. This is the last day for two of you. All right. And you have to say right now, theory and prediction, that <laughs> Bob and Winston, although actually Mai is now worse than Winston by one. Oh. Woo! That's right. Only Stephanie seems to have learned how to do the job. And if we were a normal company, we would now be honoring Stephanie because she seems to have done the best job so far. Okay? Now, go for it. This is your moment. All right, all right, all right. No! No! I'm just mixing them up. Oh, look at that. 11. Which for Bob is a miracle. Mix them. Mix right? Them. Right? The key is I mean, for Winston. Yeah, well, yeah, go, Bob. Dramatic improvement over his two previous days of failure. Yeah. He's almost up to being average. Uh -huh. mm. uh -huh. Eleven. Yeah. Tied? No, one minute. Yeah, eleven. Yeah. Okay. Counting is good. Yeah. Okay. But Stephanie's up to now always been better. So let's see if Stephanie's now going to have the big improvement. Uh -huh. mm. seven. Six. No, seven. Seven, because she missed one. Seven. Notice that Stephanie continues to improve. <laughs> this is Mai's moment, and Mai has lots of pressure <laughs> now. <laughs> you lay them off based on the totals or the last day? Uh, oh. <laughs> Two, four, six. Five. <laughs> Seventeen. Now, if you add a cross, okay, so the team has done better, but remember, the two weakest people now have to go and be fired. Yeah, well, so if you, if you had a cross of the three three days. So no, 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 don't write that in there. That's the fourth day. I just write it up here. No, 33. It's 42. Well, you just asked me to write. That's what I did. six. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> 50. 50. Well, so my is gone. Everybody agree? My failed. Okay. And, and Bob is gone. Right? And Bob's gone. Bob's gone. The big 22 killed you. I want to hearing. No, you're gone. You can try to file an EEOC complaint later, but not during the course. You, okay? Now, okay, now each of you, they go twice, okay, so Winston, you get to go, and we'll add yours up uh, under Winston and Bob, you get to go twice. You're very destructive. Okay. Ooh, uh-oh, two blanks. Twelve. Do it again. You can go again. Now notice, by the way, how the scorekeeper, who's not performing, not participating, gets a certain thrill out of his failure. <laughs> Just think about this again in terms of hierarchies. Nine. Nine. Uh, clearly, clearly, Stephanie is the person who has best understood this. Ten. Okay. So he did thirty-three. She did nineteen. But look how bad the day was. Okay. So as our consultant, what do you want to teach us now? Do you want them to step here so they can learn that? If you look at this, this would be essentially a stable process. And here, here is where 
Newt laid off the two worst people. All right, if you need to. Come on and stand up. Uh, does she need the, the hand mic or what? Or you can hold your mic up here. This is innovation. <laughs> I think you guys didn't think through this part of the process. Go for it. This is called. Is that this picking is, it up? There's only common cause variation inside the system. So the system is stable and therefore predictable. And so what we have is that with all of these people, you can say if this process yeah. doesn't change, then you would expect the same thing to happen in the future has happened in the past. Because this is a stable system, there's only common causes present. You have predictable performance. And the only way to change the performance is to change the underlying process. When we got rid of the two worst work workers, nothing really changed. The system continued to work exactly the way it was before. It's a process problem. It requires process improvement. And it had nothing to do with the motivational techniques or actually laying off the two worst workers here. Get rid of all those red beads. So you got to get rid of the red beads. No. Eliminate the red beads coming in. Ah, yes, OK. Now, why don't you all go ahead and sit down. Thanks. You may keep those as a memento of this moment of excitement. Notice here a couple of things. First of all, how did, how did you all feel as you went through this? We took control over it, really. I mean, so all right, in, in fact, what is, what, what is really to be attributed to your performance? I feel like the holes. And what else? Luck. Sure, luck. 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 <laughs> right? Pure luck. Very important, because how much of what we think we are managing in a normal system is, in fact, not theoretical, not systematic. It's just pure luck. OK? Secondly, had, how did the rest of you feel? I mean, th those of you who are working, had, had, what, was, what was your reaction? Bob, what was your I reaction? I thought I had a career. And, and <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it really wasn't that, uh, that easy to do. But she had good, good leadership. Yeah. Bob, what was, uh, Winston, what was your reaction to uh, not making it? Well, it was, it was sheer luck. Sure it's frustrating when you know what the problem yeah. is, but you don't have the power to change. Now, why did you get? Why did you think it was funny that they were? Well, because you made me shut up. But I, right from <laughs> the get go, I knew that as right. long as you got red beads in there, they're going to be pulling out red beads, and somebody's right. going right. to lose. So right. guess. So guess what? what? On a traditional assembly line, what does the traditional average worker know? That there's going to be defects, and there's nothing they can do right. about them. Right. That they are in fact what? going to be part of a system yeah. over which they have no control. And in fact, if the vice president for purchasing takes the cheapest contract from the worst supplier, their performance is going to go down. Right? right? Which leads them then to react exactly as you were reacting, which was to be cynical. And instead of building a team, to, to say, well, that person's gone. Which both leads you to be frightened and therefore more withdrawn and therefore more cynical. Which is, guess what? The typical reaction of the classic 1930 blue collar industry. So it defines a lot of modern labor relations. Because the boss who didn't have to do this, the guy who, who made his bonus this year by buying the cheap parts, because he lowered the cost of parts. So he looks great. But he ruined our career. Because he wasn't measured as part of a system. He was, he was sub optimized, so he measured purchasing. But if purchasing got you lousy parts, you know, he, he, if he had bought only white beads, he would have paid 8% more. And this would have been a piece of cake. So he saved 8% and made our job impossible. 